Don't you dare come to my graduation ceremony. If a plain old lady like you shows up, everyone will laugh at me. It's my big day, so stay away. These were my daughter Lauren's words. She thinks I'm an embarrassment. When she called, her voice was sharp and panicked. Hey old lady, where are you? Leaving a silly note like that and thinking you'll get away with it? Come home right now. I could hear my husband John's voice too. Both were frantic. My name is Kelly Brooke. I'm a 41-year-old housewife. I've been working part-time at a local real estate agency, raising Lauren and doing household chores for over a decade. I married John 15 years ago. He had Lauren from his previous marriage. I met John at work before we got married. I was working at a construction company and John was there for sales. Our company was tough on contractors, but John always had a smile and a positive attitude. I once recommended a product he was selling to my company, and as a result, his company got the contract. This led to us going out for meals several times, deepening our relationship. Eventually, he proposed, and I happily accepted. I quit my job just before our wedding. John confessed that he was living alone with his eight-year-old daughter. At first, I thought it was a lie, but it was true. I met Lauren a week before the ceremony. She was shy, hiding behind John and not coming out in front of me. That's when I decided I would take care of her until she graduated high school. I couldn't forget Lauren's anxious eyes peeking out from behind John. Despite my family's strong disapproval, I decided to marry John. It was my first marriage, and my father was especially furious, saying I was being mocked. But I went against their wishes and married John. If I had listened to my parents, I might have avoided the troubles that were about to come. It's been 15 years since I got married. Lauren is now 16 and about to graduate from high school. Normally, this would be a joyful moment, but I couldn't feel happy. I remembered my hope of making her a respectable adult when I decided to marry John. Hey old lady, where's my t-shirt? Did you steal it? Lauren started calling me old lady three years after we began living together. She used to be kind, but then she suddenly became rude. Is this the t-shirt you're looking for? I handed her the shirt from the folded laundry. Why did you wash it? What if it shrinks? Normally, you should take it to the cleaners. You're so clueless, really so dense. I had hand-washed and air-dried the t-shirt, thinking it would be damaged at the cleaners, but I couldn't explain this to Lauren. All I could do was apologize. Lauren snatched the shirt from my hand, muttering, you're so useless, before walking away. Her words pierced my heart. I couldn't argue back and just bowed my head. I didn't understand why Lauren had become so harsh with me. At first, I thought it was because she was teased about her father's remarriage, but that didn't seem to be the case. Around the same time, John's attitude towards me also changed. He used to smile a lot, like when he was selling, but lately he stopped smiling at home and became more sullen. He even started calling me hey you. Lauren's behavior seemed to follow his lead. I thought maybe I was lacking in some way, so I tried harder with the housework and took extra care of Lauren. I wanted her to grow up to be a respectable adult, but contrary to my hopes, Lauren's attitude towards me worsened day by day. Calling me old lady became the norm for her. I never heard words of gratitude from Lauren anymore. What was strange was that at parent-teacher conferences in elementary school, Lauren's behavior was normal and she wasn't rude at all. John talked normally with Lauren, even smiling sometimes. This meant that her terrible behavior was directed only at me, which hurt me even more. Whenever I tried to talk to John, his attitude was distant, completely different from before. I had no one to confide in, and I felt more and more isolated in my own home. Since middle school, Lauren stopped telling me about school, and John would attend school events. I had to learn about the schedule for school events from my neighbors. John and Lauren seemed to get along well, going out together sometimes. I wanted to be treated as family by John and Lauren, too. I had always wanted to live happily together. I never imagined it would be this painful to have that wish unfulfilled. 
John's attitude towards me continued to worsen. Dust is piling up on the stairs. Clean it up. You're a stay-at-home wife, aren't you? The toilet paper is almost out. Are you even cleaning the bathroom? You're really dense, you know. I frequently received such rejoins from John. Originally, when we first got married, we both shared household chores. John had been doing housework while living with Lauren, and he was happy at first to share the chores with me. But now I do all the housework. John used to say it was wrong for a stay-at-home wife to do all the housework. Lauren was an easy child to take care of, but this somehow made things worse for me. When I tried talking to John, he just dismissed it as my lack of effort. In the end, everything was my fault. The more I tried talking to John, the heavier my heart felt. He would nitpick my housekeeping, constantly criticizing me. You can't even clean properly. No improvement after all these years. Do you lack learning ability? John looked down on me with disdain. All I could do was apologize. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll try harder. Please forgive me. John sighed dramatically, as if exasperated. Even if you try hard, you won't be able to do it. That's why you get scolded. Always saying you'll do it. But have you ever? John's words kept chipping away at my heart as time passed. I was worn out, and Lauren turned 19. I was curious about her plans after graduation, but she wouldn't tell me, and neither would John. By then, I had stopped talking to John and Lauren, unless it was absolutely necessary. One day, I overheard Lauren and John discussing her future. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I wanted to know, so I listened. I got it. I can go to college on a recommendation, and I even got a scholarship. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. I could hear the joy in Lauren's voice. She never spoke to me like that. Good for you. It's the result of your efforts. All the housework we dumped on that dense housekeeper was worth it. Were they referring to me as the housekeeper? Yeah, she was a good outlet for stress. I heard their mocking laughter. Quietly, I left and locked myself in the bathroom, the only place I could be alone. I crouched there holding my head and cried. To think that John and Lauren saw me in such a light. I had endured for the past twelve years, being Lauren's mother and John's wife, even when my heart felt like it was breaking. I forced myself to keep going, even when I felt at my limit. There were times I felt I couldn't get up, but I made myself do it. Making lunchboxes, preparing breakfast, doing laundry and other housework. It hurt to even lie down, but if I did that, I feared I would never be needed by John and Lauren again. Driven by this fear, I continued to live in exhaustion. Honestly, I don't remember much about this period. One day, after shopping, a neighbor told me something shocking. Tomorrow was Lauren's high school graduation. I couldn't admit I didn't know, so I just smiled vaguely and left. As soon as I got home, I collapsed onto the sofa, I had always thought about making Lauren a respectable adult. Her graduation from high school was supposed to be a milestone for that. Again, I was the only one left out in this house. I'm not allowed to have a smartphone or use a computer. The only thing I have is a simple flip phone that can only make calls. Since John handles all the school communications, I don't have any mom friends or any way to get information about the school. Still, I learned about sports days and recitals from neighbors or overheard children's conversations and secretly attended them. I wanted to attend Lauren's high school graduation and celebrate her step into adulthood. While I was crying on the sofa, Lauren came home from school. Old lady, why are you loafing around? You're so gloomy you make the whole house dark. Can't you do something about it? Lauren glared at me. If she had told me the date of the graduation, I wouldn't have felt this way. For the first time, I felt anger rising from the depths of my heart. So the graduation is tomorrow. Seems you didn't tell me about it, I said with a tone of blame. Lauren looked a bit startled by my words, but then sighed dramatically. So what? You're not going to the graduation anyway, so you don't need to know the date. I was surprised. I never said I wasn't going to the graduation. Don't come. If a plain old lady like you comes, 
you'll just be a laughing stock. It's my big day. Absolutely do not come. Lauren's words made me feel dizzy. Clearly, she didn't think of me as family. To her, I was an embarrassing presence. Just this once, I had hoped for forgiveness, but it was denied. Her words pierced my heart. I was truly just a nuisance, clearly told so by Lauren herself. That night, John came home with a suit and a dry cleaner bag. He had taken his suit to the cleaners himself without asking me. Of course, he knew about Lauren's graduation. When I saw the suit, John commented, Right, you didn't hear about it from Lauren. He looked at me with a mix of pity and a smirk. I realized I was the least needed in this house. Thinking I was part of the family was just my own delusion. At that moment, I realized my heart had reached its limit long ago. So, I decided to end my role as a family member. The next day, John and Lauren left together for her high school graduation. I was left behind, and John even told me not to bother with dinner as they would eat out. I wasn't invited. The old me would have just silently accepted this treatment, but those days were over. I decided to leave this house. It was a decision I made last night. As soon as they left, I quickly packed my things, left a note, and left the house. I couldn't be part of John and Lauren's family anymore. I decided to seek refuge at my parents' house, a three-hour train ride away. There, I would prepare to sever ties with John and Lauren. The note I left stated my wish to cut familial ties and live independently, and that further details should be discussed through a lawyer. I hadn't found a lawyer yet, but I knew my father could recommend one. My family is wealthy and owns a lot of land. My father is a well-known figure in the area and owns considerable real estate. I remembered meeting a lawyer during a New Year's greeting at home, so I knew my father could help. Another task I needed to do was sell the house where John and Lauren currently lived. This house was built on land owned by my father, and the construction was funded by him as a wedding gift for me. I had been repaying my father slowly with the money I earned for my real estate job, which he had also helped me get. The house, including the land, is owned by my father and legally registered in his name. At the time, John might have thought the house was a gift and never asked about the ownership because he was afraid of offending my father and losing the gift. John was the classic home tyrant, harsh to those he saw as weaker but submissive to those above him. I told my father everything that had happened. As I spoke, tears flowed uncontrollably, and I had to pause several times due to sobbing, but my father listened until the end. I saw tears in his eyes too. The most relieving part was that my father didn't criticize my initial decision to marry John. At the end, my father said, you've been through a lot. Afterward, he made several phone calls, and lawyers and real estate managers came to the house. Everything happened quickly from there. It was decided that the house would be demolished, and the demolition was scheduled for a week later. In the note I left, I wrote, Please leave within a week. My father commented sarcastically, That's quite kind of you. For me, it was just to avoid any later complaints. During the week, I consulted with the lawyer about the divorce. I also shared the whole story with my mother, and we cried together. I can't forget the determined look on my mother's face. I had also discussed my future plans with my father. The priority was to establish a new foundation for my life. It took courage to talk to my parents, and it was painful, but once I did, my heart felt lighter. For the first time in 12 years, I slept soundly. Two weeks later, while I was staying at my parents' house, I received a call on my cell phone. As expected, it was Lauren. Honestly, I didn't want to talk to her. Remembering how she had treated me, a black stain spread in my heart. I decided to ignore the call, but they didn't stop. There were several from John as well. They were probably calling about the note I left or the demolition. For 12 years, John and Lauren called me old lady and you, exploiting my efforts and treating me like a tool. I endured such treatment for a long time. The thought of dealing with them again made me shudder, but I knew I needed to settle the past to move forward. Without confronting them, I wouldn't feel at peace. 
I felt I owed them a proper response, so I steeled myself and answered the phone. Hey, old lady, where are you right now? Lauren's screeching voice pierced my ears, hurried and panicked. Leaving such a ridiculous note. You think you'll be forgiven? Where are you now? Come back home right now. I could hear John's voice as well. They both seemed frantic. I imagined Lauren's reaction when she returned from her graduation ceremony to find no old lady to vent her stress on, and the note about the divorce and the house. I couldn't help but smile faintly at Lauren's panic. Um, who is this, please? I asked. Lauren seemed taken aback by my response and stumbled over her words. I hung up the phone. Afterward, I called the real estate management company to confirm when the demolition would start. It was scheduled for tomorrow as planned, and John had already been informed. I requested to postpone the demolition to the day after tomorrow and asked them to inform John about the delay. This gave them one more day. John would probably come here, and that's when I would deliver my final message to John and Lauren. I ignored the dozens of calls from them. The next day, around noon, I heard the doorbell ring and knocking on the door. It must be John and Lauren. They would have wanted to come earlier, but the journey here could be long due to poor connections. John and Lauren appeared, panting heavily, evidently having rushed here. I had arranged for my parents to stay in another room, so it seemed like I was the only one at home. I led John and Lauren into the living room. John entered hesitantly clearly uncomfortable around my father. My father is wealthy, well-respected, and has a commanding presence, making him a higher authority than John. On the other hand, Lauren didn't seem intimidated at all. She appeared determined to overpower me and bring me back home. Lauren plopped down on a chair in the living room, crossing her legs and silently gesturing for me to sit opposite her. I took my time preparing tea, moving leisurely before finally sitting across from her. Growing impatient, Lauren addressed me. What's the meaning of all this? John, sitting next to her, placed the note I had left on the table. I didn't react and just met Lauren's gaze silently. She was the first to look away, attempting to dispel the awkwardness with a laugh. What was that who is this act yesterday? Pretty poor performance. I continued to stare at Lauren silently. She became visibly uncomfortable, shifting in her seat. Look, it's no use. A dumb old lady like you can't survive without us. You're nothing but trash. I almost reacted to her harsh words but restrained myself, noticing the tremble in her voice. Lauren was clearly bluffing. John had been silent, just watching how things unfolded. Stop being stubborn and come back home, Lauren said trying to confuse and coax me back with her cruel words. As Lauren became more agitated, I responded calmly, I don't have a family, do I? Oh, I have parents, but you two are not my family, are you? Lauren, clearly out of her element, raised her voice. What are you saying? Dad and I are your family, right? Right, Dad? Lauren, feeling at a disadvantage alone, sought support from John. John looked around nervously, and, once he confirmed they were alone, turned to me with newfound bravado. That's right. You can't live without us, just like Lauren says. So you're coming back, John said, getting bossy all of a sudden when he noticed my parents were nowhere to be seen. Looking back on it now, what a small-spirited man he is. Like I said, I have no family, I replied firmly. No matter what John and Lauren said, I would continue to treat them as strangers they were not my family. If they were, they wouldn't have treated me like a slave. A true family supports and helps each other, especially when someone is in trouble. But John and Lauren were different. For 12 years, they treated me like a servant, a vent for their stress. They insisted this was normal, oblivious to how wrong and cruel it was, unconsciously oppressing me. I marvel at how I endured it for 12 years, almost impressed with myself. It started when I saw Lauren peeking out from behind John's back. I had promised myself to raise her to be a decent adult. I endured and served them for this promise, at least until Lauren graduated high school. I had decided that Lauren's high school graduation and her moving on would John the end of our relationship. 
I had held a faint hope that if John and Lauren changed their ways and improved their attitudes towards me by the time of her graduation, I would continue with them as a family, but they betrayed my expectations, leading to this situation. Everything was decided the day before the graduation ceremony, so now I confront them with the appropriate attitude. John and Lauren are no longer my family, and I will not treat them as such. Realizing the significance of my treating them as strangers, Lauren altered her approach. We're family, aren't we, Mom? Stop this silly act, please, she said, switching from calling me old lady to Mom. Realizing her usual tactics wouldn't work, John swallowed hard and watched intently. Even though you're not my birth mother, we've lived together all this time, so please listen to my request, Lauren pleaded, her previously defiant posture changing to one more pleading. I have no obligation to respond to requests from someone who isn't family, I replied, keeping my composure and emotional distance. Tears appeared in Lauren's eyes as she looked at me desperately. Please listen to me. The note you left, it's not true, right? You can't really be selling the house. It's not serious, right? Because you're part of our family. Lauren's use of the term, mom, made my skin crawl, especially since her main concern seemed to be the house. She was anxious about losing the house, not about losing me. No matter how much Lauren pleaded, my feelings remained unchanged. She lowered her face, apparently crying. This is some kind of joke, right? You can't be serious, John said, upset by Lauren's tears, and turned his anger towards me. What's with that note? Come back right now and stop the demolition. John spoke rapidly, driven by anger. I can't do that. The decision has been made, I said in a restrained voice. Do you think you can get away with doing this to your family? John demanded. That's why I've been saying we're not family, I replied. Neither John nor Lauren seemed willing to listen. Please understand, we're not family. I wondered how many times I had to repeat the same thing. Suddenly, John stood up and slammed his fist on the table. Don't joke with me. I was startled but managed not to react. Who's joking? After not treating me as family for 12 years, you can't suddenly expect me to act like one. It's impossible. My voice was harsher than I intended. I'm angry too, though I didn't show it. My anger was bubbling up inside me like magma, about to erupt. John and Lauren's selfish actions were unforgivable. They trampled on my 12 years of suffering and efforts to be part of the family. I tried to become a family with John and Lauren, but they mocked and used me. They wouldn't understand how lonely and painful it was to be left out. I wished so many times to be treated like family, but my wish never came true. It took me 12 years to give up, despite my continuous efforts. As Lauren's mother, this is the outcome. A self-mocking smile appeared on my face. Seeing my dry smile, John and Lauren stared at me in shock. John seemed to lose his strength and slumped into the chair. These two, far from understanding my feelings, tried to use me until the very end. No matter how much I cared for them, they never cared for me. Even though I cherished them, they never cherished me. When they found themselves in trouble, they said things like, we're family, but they never meant it, they just wanted to use me, it's just too convenient. I felt not just a headache, but even nausea. Why did I keep tolerating these people for 12 years? It's strange to think back on it, but there's no point in reflecting now. There's no future for the three of us together anymore. All I can do is make John and Lauren acknowledge their guilt and pay for it. I won't expect or trust anything from Lauren or John anymore. John stood up and apologized, I'm really sorry. Please come back, I beg you. Even with his apology, it doesn't touch my heart at all. I won't extend a helping hand, and I definitely won't think about living together. Just stop it. I'm no longer your family. I'm a stranger, I said. Lauren also began to apologize, following John. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. We're family, so let's go home together. I was astounded by their self-serving talk. After treating me like a stranger for 12 years, now they want me back because we're family? That's too naive, 
It's just not happening. I couldn't stay calm anymore. My words flowed, driven by emotion. Harsh words escaped my lips, words I had held back out of consideration for John and Lauren. I don't want to hear any excuses. I can't trust any words. I can't ever imagine us being a family again. At this point, I placed a piece of paper in front of John. It was a divorce paper, already signed by me. Write on the divorce paper now, I'll go and submit it. Write it here. John shook his head from side to side, then he showed me a smile. Think it over, will you? I was astounded by John's lack of grace in handling the situation. Such a small-minded man. I had always misunderstood John's ingratiating smile. The smile he showed when we first met was a sleazy expression of sizing someone up. I mistook it for the smile of a kind person. It still makes me angry thinking about it. I stood up and called my parents from the back. My parents appeared in the living room. John's mouth was agape as if his jaw had fallen off. My father glared sharply at John, and my mother also had a stern look on her face. John shrunk back just from their gaze. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the trouble caused by Kelly's misdeed. I thought I heard it wrong. What misdeed of mine is John still trying to shift responsibility for? My father's eyebrows twitched, but he remained silent. Kelly, no, Miss Kelly left the house on her own. I was just trying to persuade her to come back. Right, Lauren? John was prompting Lauren to agree with his nonsense. Kelly's misdeed? Don't be ridiculous. My father's loud voice echoed through the house, the windows rattled. John and Lauren gasped and held their breath. My father stood in front of John, bent down to meet his gaze. How could you interpret Kelly's actions as selfish? You only think about yourself. You're such a small man. Then my father turned to Lauren. It seems you've done some terrible things too, going along with this man. What did you think of Kelly, fools? My father's loud voice echoed through the house. Lauren was trembling, perhaps terrified. My father stood up, glaring at the two of them in a commanding stance. Lauren, you've been causing problems at school too. I've looked into it. Through my father's connections, a detective agency investigated Lauren. It turned out she had been forcefully taking money from a girl at school. The victim was too scared to tell anyone but my father had arranged to prepare a criminal complaint. Lauren, just like how she looked down on me, was doing the same at school. Lauren exclaimed, that's a lie. Did she tell on me? I felt like I saw Lauren's true nature no remorse at all. She was only thinking about getting through this situation. John, you too. You've been embezzling money from the company. This was also discovered through the detective agency's investigation. John had been faking business trips. I initiated this investigation to strengthen my divorce case, but it unearthed shocking facts about both of them. Why would you even, is it her? John reacted the same as Lauren, with no remorse. They were both unrepentant. They won't just face my punishment, they deserve consequences too. Then my mother spoke up. All right, the discussion is over. Sign the divorce papers and leave this house as soon as possible. John, sobbing, kept muttering, I don't want to, but he seemed to give up when my father handed him a pen. He sat down and signed the divorce papers. I glanced at the clock. It was almost 7.30 p.m. The last train leaves at 8 o'clock p.m. If they miss it, there won't be another train until the morning. In this small town, there are no taxes. If they don't catch the last train, John and Lauren won't make it to the demolition scheduled for tomorrow. They probably hadn't packed anything, thinking they could persuade me. As I hesitated to tell them, Lauren suddenly blurted out something unbelievable in a sulky tone. But this divorce was your idea, right, Dad? You should get alimony. Lauren, having been exposed, seemed to become defiant. Both my parents looked shocked. That's impossible. What you've done is essentially domestic violence, a crime. Lauren was momentarily taken aback, but then defiantly retorted, show me the proof. I placed a notebook on the table. This is a diary I started keeping since I got married. Lauren glared at me with a scornful look. 
you don't even have a smartphone or computer. What kind of evidence could you possibly have? A diary is a valid form of evidence, you know, not just video, audio, or pictures. Lauren looked utterly astonished. That's right. Even the lawyer acknowledged it. This diary is substantial evidence. John and Lauren, seemingly resigned, hung their heads in defeat. I dramatically checked my watch. Well, you've missed the last train. You won't be able to get home tonight. My mother looked at John and Lauren with a smug expression. That's right, there are no taxes around here. I wonder if there's even a decent hotel nearby. All right, we're done here. Get out now. John and Lauren were hurried out of the house. From the second floor balcony, I could see them rushing toward the station, probably shocked that the last train left so early. Watching their flustered figures, I felt the weight in my heart starting to lift. Some loose ends remained, but I felt a sense of closure. John and Lauren, having missed the last train, couldn't find a taxi and ended up walking for about an hour to find a hotel. When they got home the next day, the demolition was already underway, but they managed to salvage only their clothes. Unbeknownst to them, I had temporarily stored the furniture, appliances, and my belongings in a warehouse. Later, I received a report from my lawyer that the divorce, including the alimony claim, was finalized. John, initially reluctant to pay, complied after pressure was applied to his company. According to the detective agency, John was fired for embezzlement, and Lauren's scandal led to her expulsion from high school, ruining her chances for college. John, now jobless, could only afford to rent a small, old apartment far from the station. There he lives with Lauren, who dropped out of high school. Lauren blames everything on John, and he constantly criticizes her, leading to endless arguments, as reported by the detective agency. I had quit my part-time job at the real estate agency and was considering my next move when my father suggested I help with the family business. I took a job at his resort property management company. Living in a resort area is a big change from city life, but being surrounded by nature has been refreshing. I also got a dog, so I don't feel lonely living alone. For now, this dog is all the family I need. I plan to live a peaceful life, just me and my dog.